input flow at the, or in the inlet to the separator? Uh, I'm an aerospace engineer at NASA where I work on specifically water management and water recovery systems for Moon and Mars spacecraft. The goal with treating water is to separate the clean water from the contaminants that are making it dirty. There's 1.2 billion people in the world that currently lack access to safe drinking water. And that's huge. There's one out of every six people in the world are drinking contaminated water that can be relatively easily treated. And the people in Rwanda fall squarely into that statistic. Treating water for astronauts in space might seem a whole lot different than treating water for people in Rwanda, but in fact, a lot of the requirements are similar. You're in a pretty harsh environment where you don't have a lot of resources, and you have to install systems that take really badly contaminated water and turn it into drinking water, and they have to be able to do that for a long period of time without very much maintenance or resupply. One, two, three. The problem is, is that they're collecting water that's been running off the hills, through pastures and farmland and agricultural land. And so it collects all sorts of bacteria uh, and it just gets dirty in the process. And so this is what they're drinking. Engineers Without Borders is an all volunteer organization. And now we're over 240 chapters across the country, including one that I founded here at the Johnson Space Center. Uh, the Johnson Space Center chapter is made up of engineers and astronauts and educators and scientists who are all working in their spare time on the evenings and weekends and taking vacation time to do these projects around the world. We tested the water uh, before our systems were put in and it was nearly uh, the equivalent of drinking raw sewage with the, the bacteria formations that were, that were in that water. And so you can imagine the sickness that develops from drinking that kind of water every day. So our focus in Rwanda and a lot of the communities we work in is just to clean up that water. Uh, we were out here pretty much every Saturday from 10 a.m. till about 4 in the afternoon. It's just as with the space program, sometimes we have to do a lot with limited resources, and that's exactly what we're trying to do here. The, the people have so many other problems. Water is just one small problem on a list of 100 things that they're doing to survive every day. And in Rwanda, it's a day-to-day -day struggle, really. And so water's last on the list for these people, even though it's, it's one of the most important things, just because they're, uh, they're basically str struggling to get food. So each project takes between six months and even eight, up to 18 months to assess, design, build, test, and install the system. It's a big part of what we do is education. So now we're washing the filter. We're teaching them that by drinking clean water, they're not going to be as sick. Uh, but that's, that's the norm. Their, their lives are lived in sickness. <coughs> so the system that we've designed here, uh, it's pretty simple and it's technology that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and that's just running water through gravel and then through sand to basically remove that dirt out of the water. Um, once you get all the dirt out that you can see though, there can still be small viruses, bacteria, little organisms, and so to kill those, uh, we use an ultraviolet light and it just heats up those uh, small bacteria and viruses and kills them basically. A lot of what we do is take a particular water system that we implemented in Rwanda and change it slightly to implement in Mexico. Even in Mexico, you know, which is closer to Houston here than, than Denver, uh, f families have lost children to, uh, to water-related diarrhea. And so, I mean, people um, are dying over this, really. I focus on monitoring the system and teaching the kids how to monitor the system. And we have little bacterial plates that we, we put the water on, a mill on them, and then after two days, they can actually see if there's bacteria in the water that can cause them illness. The yeah, orphanage we went to last summer, the kids refused to drink water if it doesn't come through uh, this system that we installed, which is great. And part of the reason may just be because of the novelty of it, because we were there installing it, and they just got all excited about it. But now it's embedded, and so they're going to be drinking clean water for the rest of their lives. It doesn't take NASA engineers. We just happen to be NASA engineers that wanted to do something about it. Uh, I wouldn't do what I do um, as an astronaut if I didn't truly believe that what we're doing in the space program is benefiting uh, the whole world. One hour, 22 minutes into the uh, excursion by Ron Guerin and Mike Fossum. I have the same feeling in the volunteer work that is totally separate um, from NASA uh, in, in our personal time. Uh, I think it's equally fulfilling because we have that same uh, feeling that what we're doing is making a difference and making the world a better place. I think I've already, I kind of already made it, and so it's time now to help out the, my fellow man. I'd worked here on the site for several months, but I didn't realize 
the imp impact it would have on the community until I saw the looks on the faces of the people there. Even these kids that live in such a state of poverty, they're so happy and they're so happy to see us and they're running around in rags and with you know, barely enough to eat. The look on the kids' faces when they drink you know, clean water for the first time, it, it makes it all, all the work worth it.